I got two clips. This is the clip I'm gonna transition into. I'm gonna hold Alt on the keyboard and move it up to the top of the clip. And then I'm gonna rotoscope my subject out on this clip. You can use Magic Mask, Runway ML, or you can do it manually. Just need to rotoscope out the subject. And I got my subject rotoscoped out. I'm gonna select the second clip. I'm gonna hold Shift and hit the right arrow. That's actually gonna move my playhead exactly one second. And then I'm gonna move my two clips behind that playhead. Now I'm gonna highlight my first clip with the rotoscope subject. I'm gonna right click, open in Fusion. With the media one selected, I'm gonna grab a transform node. If your marker is not already set, you can click here and go to frame five. In frame five, I want to go to my size and the inspector tab. I'm gonna activate the keyframe. I'm gonna double click the numbers and type in 1.50. And then I'm gonna go to frame seven by going back down here to the keyframe indicator. I'm clicking seven. And in frame seven, I'm gonna hit this little notch here to resize it to the original size. I'm gonna go to frame zero and actually turn this all the way down. So it's gonna give me a little bounce animation. I'm gonna activate the spline editor, select transform, zoom to fit, and select all, hit S to smooth. And for the added little extra sauce, you go to settings, motion blur, then crank up the settings. In the back of the edit page, I'm gonna right click, open the second clip in Fusion. I'm already in frame 24. I'm actually gonna go to frame 26. Give it about two frames, and that's why I want the effect to take place. All right, first I'm gonna detach this from media out. and move this over a little. I'm gonna grab a background node. A merge is automatically created. I'm gonna select the merge. I'm gonna hit Control T for them to swap places. And I'm actually gonna hit this little second indicator here, or you can hit two on the keyboard to bring it up to the viewer. I'm gonna select the background node and grab a rectangle mask. And then I'm going to the inspector tab. On the width, I'm gonna double click and select one. And on the Y axis, I'm gonna go to select 0.75. It's gonna move the rectangle mask up to the top part of the frame. If you click on the viewer and actually hit Control G, it will bring up a guide that helps with placement of different masks and things like that. Then I'm gonna go into the merge one, go into the inspector tab. On the operators, I'm gonna change it from over to in. And that's gonna move my clip into the mask. From there, I'm gonna select my nodes, hit Control C or Command C on Mac. I'm gonna double click an empty space and hit Control or Command V. Move this down a little. I'm gonna take the output of this merge and connect it to the output of the media one. Then I'm going to the rectangle one dash one. I'm going to the inspector tab and on the Y axis, I'm gonna change the settings to 0.25. Now you don't see anything change. You're gonna go here to the media one dash one. You're gonna select it, hit two on the keyboard, and now you can see it at the bottom. I'm gonna select my merge one and grab a transform node. I'm gonna select the transform and hit Control C or Command C. I'm gonna click on my second merge and then I'm gonna hit Control Shift V to paste the instance. Using the instance node, I can control, I can change the parameters of one node and it will affect the other. Now to bring both my masks into the viewer, I'm gonna grab a merge node. I'm gonna just take the output of the transforms, connect it to the merge, and then take the output of the merge and connect it to the media out. From there, I'm gonna hit two on the keyboard and now I can see both of my masks. Now if I go into the instance, I'm going to the inspector tab under invert transform. I'm gonna right click D instance and then I'm gonna check to activate it. And then if I go up here to the center and move, they're gonna move in the opposite ways. Now I'm gonna go through and set keyframes to animate the transform. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna double click to reset. And I'm gonna start at frame 26. So I'm gonna go up here to center. I'm gonna set a keyframe. I'm gonna go about five frames to frame 31 and I'm basically just gonna animate it off. Of course, you gotta throw it in the extra little sauce, so I'm gonna go to Spline Editor, Transform, Select the Fit, Select All, and then it adds the Smooth. And since we're using Instant Nodes, the keyframes and Spline Edits that I made with this Transform also affect this one as well. Now you're gonna go into the Settings and turn on your Motion Blur. Now I wanna apply this actually to the third clip, so if I go up here to Clips, Select the clip here with the subject is not rotoscope. I want to apply all this to it, but I don't want to redo all the nodes. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold control to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to select all my nodes with the exception of the media in and the media out. I'm going to hit control C. I'm going to click on this clip. I'm going to double click an empty space and then I'm going to hit control V or command V. I'm going to go back up here, cut this off. I'm going to zoom in. 
I'm gonna hold shift and remove the media out to the other side. Move this media in down here. I'm gonna connect it to the green input of the merge one. And then I'm gonna take the green input of this merge one dash one and connect it to the output of the media one. And then take the output of the merge two and connect it to the input of the media out one. By doing it, the same keyframes that I set for the original clip, now apply to this and now it has the same animation. Now I want the same animation, but I want to animate in. So instead of having to redo the keyframes, I'm going to the spline editor. I'm going to select transform one. Select it. Zoom to fit. Now I'm going to go down here and select all. And then I'm going to go over here where it says reverse. I'm just going to reverse my keyframes. Cut this back off. My motion blur, everything is already set. So now when I go back to my edit page, Now we're going to add one extra little piece of sauce on that. We're going to my media pool. We got a clip here from Pixels. And we're going to go there. I'm actually going to hold Alt, select the sound, and delete it. Don't need it. I'm going to shorten this down to even up with the rest of the clip. So now we go to the transition. He'll pop in, and then you see the little flames behind him. There's one problem here, and that's with the clips themselves, because this clip has like a little cinematic drop down or whatever on it and the frame clips are full frame i'm gonna go back here and cut off my media pool i'm actually gonna select this clip here and then i'm gonna just zoom in to fix that and that's gonna throw off my mask so what i'm gonna do is hit Control or command c then i'm gonna go up to my rotoscope layer i'm gonna hit alt or options v and it's gonna ask me what i want to paste i'm just gonna select zoom then apply so now they got the exact same zoom parameters. And that's the effect. This effect is not locked into the rectangle node. So if I go down here, right click and open infusion, I can actually change the mask. You can use any mask. And so if I go through here and select the rectangle mask, I'm gonna hold shift and remove them. I'm gonna grab a polygon mask or polygon node. I'll connect it to my background. I'm gonna go down here to the merge one and hit two of my keyboard to bring it in the viewer. Of course you can't see anything right now, but I'm gonna go and I'm gonna hold control to zoom out. I'm gonna create like a little triangle mask across the top part of the footage. Now you can actually see my footage. I'm gonna select the poly mask, hit control or command C. I'm clicking an empty space, hit control or command V to paste. I'm gonna paste this to the other background node. I'm gonna bring this merge here into the viewer. It's the exact same mask, so you can't see the other side of the footage. All I'm going to do is grab this little notch here and move it down to this end. Now from there, if I go down to the media out and bring it back into the viewer, go back to frame zero before the animation starts. And then it's going to animate those two masks in. So any mask, any shape can be used in this effect. Also, the key from having to build out this whole node tree again, you can simply go through here and select. You can select it with the mask or without the mask. Select them all. Select them all without the media out and the media in. Just right click, go to settings and save as, or you can actually go through here, select all, right click, create micro, hit create. Just give it your name, go to file, save as a group. You're gonna automatically bring up your micro folder to hit save, then close. The next time you're working on the project, you can go in here, hit control space, type in mask or whatever you name it. Hit add, it'll bring the nose back in. You right click, ungroup. And then off from there, all you gotta do is reconnect your media one and your media out. So if I hold shift and move this over here, you'll connect this to the merge two, connect this to media one, hold shift and move this over, connect this to media out. And you're done. And for more tips and tricks on how to speed up your workflow in DaVinci Resolve, check out this video here, and I'll see you next time.